today's topic, topic which is a larger and warmer sound. Because how we get a big sound is by taking out all the down, if we want to keep it warm. So I can make a bigger sound by going down more, which is, and several people today, I said, okay, now play that a little louder. And, and instantly you see them diving into the keys. And, and, and of course, that's the standard way, because of course we think if we want to play louder, we have to push the key down more. And it, that's what makes ugly sound. And if you look at it from a structural, functional point of view, well, that's the dysfunctional thing, because as soon as anything is going down in that structure, there's a compression. As soon as anything is going down in that structure, there's some sort of slight collapse which must then be resisted. So as I demonstrate, I'm feeling my shoulder tense up. I'm feeling all these places in my body resisting the pressure of downward on the key. Now, the piano key is, is designed to come back up and uh, quicker than you would expect. And it's, it's, a, it's an extremely ingenious mechanism because one would think that if it takes 52 grams to push the key down, then you would need to remove 52 grams for the key to come back up again. Well, it turns out that there are two different weights in a piano action. One is the, the uh, amount of grams it takes to overcome the resistance of the key going down, and then it's the amount of grams you need to take off to make the key get back, come, come back up again. And those two numbers are not the same. So if it takes 52 grams to put the key down, if I take off only 30 of those grams, the key will already come back up again. It's a miracle. You don't know how it happens. And that's because, so that the key, as a personality, it has this strong inner tendency to want to go back up again. And Steinways are the best for that. They, they call it the Steinway bounce. That's what that tendency is, is called. And so we want to, to produce our fortes, we want to work with that tendency of the key, not to go against it. So if I'm going down, then I'm compressing the key, I'm clamping the key, I'm crunching the key. And if I go up, the sound was totally different. When I go up, the sound is clearer, it's more variegated, and there's no clash between the voices. So I hear whatever chord I'm playing, it's pure. One of the reasons it's pure is because, well, listen to this. If I'm clamping at all, then there's this kind of uh, quite a, a big sound of vibrating wood. Now I'm going to play louder, but I'm going to make it go completely up. You see, the, the second one is actually louder, but it sounds less. Now, those vibrations, that, th that thumping sound, those vibrations go all the way through the piano case, and they go into the soundboard of the piano and they interfere with the pure vibration of the string. So that if I play like this, then that thumping sound already created cross vibrations which interfere with the pure tone of each note. And if I do this other way, then there's less of that thumping and the soundboard vibrates in a more pure way. So the tone of each note is untrammeled, it's un... It's not dirtied in any way by these, the knocking of the case. So that's one, one reason that I cultivate this up so much with everybody that I've been working with today.